Welcome back to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really glad to have Peter Talman with me once again. Uh, Peter is a geologist. He's uh, a head of Klondike Gold Corp, and he's a lot of experience in exploring and de- developing projects uh, in many different places around the world, in Canada, Chile, Mexico, and Australia. Uh, and his he's been involved in grassroots discovery and delineation of three mineral deposits over his career. And, uh, well, he's just had a you know, very highly acclaimed, very highly regarded geologist when I talk to his peers uh, they have nothing but good things to say about Peter, so it's a pleasure having him with us. Thanks for joining me again, Peter. Thank you, Jay. It's a pleasure to be back. Always good to have you. I should mention that your uh, stock trades in Toronto, KG is a symbol. You can buy it down here in the States, as I have, under the symbol KD, KGF. 67.5 million shares out, and in U.S. money, about 26 cents, giving it a, a really minuscule market cap of $18 million. So... Uh, I think people should keep that in mind when we talk about the prospects that you have here. I mean, we last had you on the show around February 14th of this year, I believe. That's the last time you were with us. And after that, just after that, you announced a $2 million exploration program for this year. Can you talk a little about that exploration program, Peter? What were the goals and the objectives of this year's exploration work? Well, I appreciate it. That was back then, and and it's been a long couple of months here, but, you know, February, March, April, what we were looking at was drilling 60 holes on our very large property here in the Klondike um, in Yukon, um, uh, doing about 5,000 soils, which would kind of regionally cover holes where we don't know anything about the uh, exploration potential, mapping and prospecting many of the areas that nobody's really been to or delivered any any results and also doing a, a kind of a high pollutant 3D IP survey over the main zone of interest that we discovered late, late last year, which was Lone Star. So the, what we thought was, you know, 50 to 60 holes for the year, the majority of them would be on this Lone Star potential discovery, uh, focus the 3D IP on that, but try to do generative exploration all the way through the 550 square kilometers of land that we have. Wow, it's a huge, uh, huge track of land you've got there. Uh, one very positive factor that seems to me uh, to bode very well, and I think you talked about it back in February even, you put a, uh, a couple of holes down last year, I believe towards the end of the year, and you discovered the potential for a bulk mineable project instead of just a uh, a vein, high-grade vein target. There's some dissemination beyond the veins that give you the potential to do something on a bulk mining scale that could really enhance the economics. Can you talk a little bit about your press release today, which seems to enhance that idea even uh, more, Peter, if I understand what you put out today? Yeah, well, and that's uh, so appreciate it. So we're in the Klondike, which has produced in Placer 20 million ounces of gold. We own the entire district, so all the gravels that contain that 20 million ounces uh, we own the underlying rights to and basically all the highlands around and appreciate that all that gold is extracted just by simple gravity separation with water, so it's visible gold. Mm-hmm. And the Klondike is known for its visible gold, and so far, historically, it had been known for visible gold in quartz veins only, really. Um, and it's, I mean, many people appreciate that it's difficult to to build tons in quartz vein only deposits. They tend to be narrow and high grade, so your tonnage potential doesn't usually get to be big. They can be, but it's hard. So finding something that was bulk tonnage, uh, which is what we had at the end of last year, we had a, actually it was a PhD student suggest this one particular area and said, hey, have you looked there? Because there's disseminated gold in the rock. It's not just in the quartz vein. And so right at the end of the year, it started in late September, and we went into October drilling. And uh, you know, originally I decided to commit, I don't know, it was about half a dozen holes. We ended up drilling uh, 17, and 14 of them hit. Hmm. And and basically we went so far as to say, okay, we have, we didn't have any assays at that point. We just went, look, this looks good, and we could see visible gold through most of the stuff that we were drilling, and it looked wide. Um, so we were releasing those results in late November all the way through into mid-January, and 
and the results are really good. There is a, it's a, a relatively low grade. The best, the best hole was 2.4 grams over 37 meters, so whatever, over 100 odd feet. Uh-huh. Um, and, and all of them in, in aggregate averaged a gram and a half over 25 meters. Those are the 14 intersections. And that was drilled over a 700 meter strike length. Um, mm-hmm. All of it at surface, basically starting at surface, and that's that's what we concentrated on. Uh, and so then we had this two million dollar exploration budget that you alluded to earlier. That was just after I was on last, and mm-hmm. we went, all right, well we're, we'll try to develop this target. It is the first big bulk tonnage target that's been identified in the Klondike ever. Um, let's test that, but you know we got to keep looking for other things. So we start. We have been working for I don't know two months now, um, and we've been drilling for over a month. And what's developed first was we had a we relogged the core that we drilled last year and realized that <laughs> the, the geology is continuous, which nobody had really managed to document before, and we could trace this disseminated unit all the way across the, the Lone Star, or the Bonanza, the ridge above Bonanza Creek, mm-hmm. and then we, we went back and drilled it, and so the first, we've drilled 18 holes in total to date, and we announced the first two holes assay results this morning, and they were better than anything we drilled last year, and not only that, but we drilled... we did a step out of what we already knew. We went 50 meters away from where we, we knew there was stuff, and we hit it again with better results. And then we went behind the, the best hole as well and hit that and got better than we had last year as well. So, so that, it's, that, that, that's exciting from a number of different standpoints. Number one is that we have a consistent geological package that is mappable and we can trace it with a drill and it also has consistent grades which is also fantastic uh, it's uh, really fantastic in fact that was one of the issues that I heard uh, you know some of the skeptics talking about before was continuity and uh, if you've got that well so Peter do you, would you think your your main objective here now is to try to to go for something on a bulk mineable uh, strategy is that is that probably where you're headed with this, or, or I guess you got to take it step by step, right? This this target is huge, and uh, I know you're going to talk about the rest of the news. This is only one aspect of the news release, but the it, the, the target is it's very very big. It's beyond what you would normally speculate about as looking for, you know, X. Uh, th- this is something that has potentially. I don't know. Uh, it'll certainly be transformative for Klondike Gold. Um, I mean, part of the other part of the news release was, um, and I'm probably jumping ahead a bit, but we also took, we did wildcat drilling um, 700 meters away in one direction and half a kilometer, 500 meters away in the other direction. Off in the middle of nowhere, both of those tests also hit also hit visible gold, also hit mineralization like what we're getting in our main target area. Um, and so we have now almost two, 1.95, call it two kilometers, where we know this mineralization exists. We still don't have much information about it, but uh, I, I have lots of drill targets to go play with right now. In either direction, a long strike? In either direction and down dip. So uh-huh. we're two kilometers a long strike. We haven't begun drilling down dip yet on any of this stuff. That's about to begin now. Um, but, yeah, this is a significant target that, you know, well, when you look at all the other targets like Kamenak had, you know, several three, four, five kilometers of potential target. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm looking at that right now on our one main target, and, and we have multiple targets. We have multiple things that look just like that. All right. Um, so it's my understanding that you've got, you know, you've got this dissemination that is being proven out now, but also that you have a little better handle now in terms of structural controls for the higher grade stuff. Is that right? Yeah, both the higher and the lower, and and that's been the revel, revelationary aspect that's happened only in the last month and a half. 
as we've identified, uh, it's a, a thrust fault, uh, and a, this is a low angle. It's a fault that lies underneath the package that's mineralized, and what's happening is the gold-bearing fluids are being pumped along that fault. I think the San Andreas laid on its side, mm-hmm. and then coming off and up above it are these secondary faults. They're they, they're they're openings. They're extensional, and so the gold the gold-bearing fluids are being compressed and pumped along the the underlying fault and are escaping up into these these um, higher angle structures, and that's where we're finding that. And so the, the, where the, these higher angle structures, one of them at, at Lone Star I've called the Bonanza Fault, wherever that cuts the disseminated unit that we're finding, the, mm-hmm. that disseminated gold is hosted in a unit that's porous and permeable so the fluid mm-hmm. can get in there easily mm-hmm. and then it, dis- then it precipitates and it just comes out as, as flakes of gold. Uh, evenly disseminated through this 30 to 40 meter wide unit. Um, and as long as we follow that unit along at, or adjacent to the Bonanza Fault, we've been able to hit it and find visible gold. And that, just the proof, even just the, the proof of drilling these two holes with similar assays is, is really important because A, we have an exploration model that works. B, <laughs> That, that it's a really big area with an immense amount of strike length potential, and uh, and we can follow it. Yeah, talk a little bit about with just uh, about two minutes left. Uh, how much you have a lot of other targets, but your main focus is right in the long, Lone Star area right now, I guess, right? And that's yeah. So that's I mean, been, we we've drilled. 750 meters now um, at more or less 50 meter centers. Most of those holes are still to be come. We have a, we have 14 holes coming uh, for assay from that. Uh, we've traced it by jumping out uh, another f- whatever 1,200 meters. So we have to infill through that, and then through geophysics we've traced that again another five kilometers. So we're looking at something at seven and a half or eight kilometers long. Hmm. There's soil, gold and soils along it, and some other indications that we should go there and do something. Um, and that's one structure. That's the Bonanza Fault structure. So let's call it eight kilometers length. Hmm. Then some of the work that we've done before that I've talked about that wasn't nearly as impressive, but it was we were learning. Uh, Nugget Zone had a, from last year had an assay of five grams over 14 meters in quartz vein only. But now what we know is that that is a structure about the same length as the Bonanza fault structure. Where we drilled it, it's cutting impermeable rocks that aren't quite so porous. And mm-hmm. so it just created quartz veins, and it didn't alter the rock. Mm-hmm. So we have to follow that structure along to where it gets into these disseminated zones. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, have, we know we have four of those structures, each seven to eight kilometers in length, Wow, um, that are above this thrust and controlled by it, and that are mineral. We've we've drilled them already. We know their gold their gold mineralization is there. We just have a better understanding of them now. So we're we're really we're on to something. That's and it's very big. Well, you're on to something, and you've got phase two, which you announced. You're just starting phase two of this year's work program. With just a minute, uh, maybe two minutes, if we squeeze it, Peter. How what do you expect to do with phase two, and then? Uh, are you well funded? I guess you have enough money to carry out this year's work, but um, you know, is there anything else you can think of that our listeners need to know about? Uh, we're in the middle of spending two. Well, we're in the early phases of spending two million bucks. So we have, as we originally budgeted, loads of money to do everything we want to this this summer and fall. We would still have, at the end of the day, three million dollars left in cash in December. Uh, so yeah, we're well funded. If I make discoveries that I I, if I can produce results that I expect, um, you know, I, I foresee trying to raise a, a larger pot of money at much higher prices, of course, um, to fund a very intensive program for the next two years. And so there'd be a, a fairly major expansion of the exploration program, many more drills, lots of other geophysics um, mm. as potential. But, uh, you know, first things first, the phase two of this year uh, is going to be another 20 holes, and they're now more or less focused on extending 
the Lone Star target into these outlying other discoveries that we've just made um, so that we can prove that we have a two-kilometer strike length, not a 750-meter strike length that's mineralized. And we're also going to mm-hmm. do some undercuts to prove it goes to depth. And what mm-hmm. we're really trying to do is outline the, the beginnings of what may potentially be uh, an open pit resource if cows fly. So we've got a lot to do before we get through this year. Well, I don't think we have to wait for cows to fly. I think we, <laughs> I, I like to think it's a little more certain than that, Peter. Uh, so what what should in, what should people be watching for then? I guess drill results. You won't come up with a resource this year yet. No, we're well. I, no, we we certainly won't. Um, we may. I'm contemplating getting a, a second drill. That that's right now contemplation. But what's going to happen mm-hmm. is. Every week, or at the most two weeks, we're going to have drill results right through to November, um, maybe into the new year, um, plus other exploration results. Because we do actually get lost in this. We have other targets that we're we're having success with, um, and we're, we've got to. <laughs> I'm going to try to get over and actually test things like at Gold Run. It's 50 kilometers away from Lone Star, but it looks the mm. same. It's just wow. early days yet. Very exciting indeed, Peter. Thanks so much for being with us, and uh, we'll look to do it again sometime as your program continues to progress. Thank you. 